Non-Farm Friday, non-Farm Friday, less than 24 hours away. It's about that time of day again here, folks. Time to get back to work. It's Thursday evening. It's April the 4th, 2019. My name is Joseph, and this, of course, is your nightly newsletter. Now, remember, I help new traders find predictable, dependable, reliable, profitable trading opportunities using a simple three-step trading strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job tonight is a little bit different. My job tonight is to find the best opportunities to focus on tomorrow morning, non-farm Friday's trading session. And tonight, we're going to cover oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro in this video newsletter. I'm going to start off tonight on the black gold, the Texas tea, the crude oil futures, because the crude oil continues to be the chart that just keeps on giving. Jumping to the oil chart here tonight, we're back inside that range again. Well, back inside, that would insinuate that we actually left the range. Now, of course, last night we talked about this being a triangle, and of course, we talked about how important it was, right, to keep your eyes on those edges of the triangle. Boy, did that plan work well in Thursday's session. But now here, as we go into Friday's trading session, you can see that triangle, uh, it's kind of broken down now. We've broken into what really looks to be like a relatively wide trading range. Now, remember, anytime we have a wide trading range, I'm going to treat the range expansions a little bit differently to create support and resistance. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail on that tonight in the video. But the most important thing is it's a range bound market. Anytime I have a range bound market, we always know I want to buy those lows. I want to sell those highs. I want to stay out of the middle. And I'm going to keep my eyes open on the breakout. Now buying the lows, selling the highs, I've got two, maybe three different patterns I'm watching to buy those lows and sell those highs. And of course, I've always got my eyes open for a breakout. We're going to dig into all three of those scenarios, buying, selling, and breakouts in just a few moments as we dig into that crude oil chart. Over on the S&P here tonight, S&P still range bound here again, this time in a new range, got a bull market going higher into a short term trading range. That's a nice bull bias to it. And of course, that bull bias tells me I want to be a buyer down around the low of this trading range. So I've got my eyes on that 2872 area for a buy. But let's face it, we clearly have this market running hot and heavy here off of that low. They're trying to complete that pendulum swing. And I would assume they're trying to go back to retest that 2888. So what if we go higher here? I've got a couple different options I'm watching here for both buys and sells as we go back up to retest those highs. Short term scalps the long side, right? Longer term to the downside. And of course, we'll also talk about what a breakout looks like here on the S&P tonight. How about some NASDAQ? Boy, the NASDAQ, hope you packed your Dramamine for today. Today was quite the wild ride on that NASDAQ. Now, it all boils down to the fact that we are still, still inside this trading range, right? We talked about last night, we talked about selling high, we talked about buying low, staying away from that middle. Now, this is a narrow trading range. We talk about a wide range on oil. This is a narrow trading range. We'll talk more about the value of narrow ranges as we dig in tonight's newsletter video. But I think it's pretty easy to see right now. A nice bullish bias. That bull bias tells me we're going to try to complete the pendulum swing back in the opposite direction. I think those buyers definitely have their eyes on that big round number and, of course, a retest of that high tomorrow. How can we get there, though? With that bull move, I'm looking for pullbacks to buy nice and low, and I'm also looking for seller failures to buy into stops to make a run back to the retest the high. I got a plan to buy the lows and sell the highs, and of course, keeping an eye on that breakout because let's not forget, tomorrow's non-farm Friday and anything is possible. I'm going to dig into the NQ a lot deeper here in just a few moments, so stay tuned on that. How about some gold tonight? Boy, gold, gold, gold. Now, we talked about this last night on the newsletter. We knew we had the ECB meeting minutes in the overnight session. And, well, I think it's pretty easy to see the ECB, the ECB meeting minutes sure had quite an impact on it. You know, it was funny because we came in this morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. And, of course, the market had already made this big leg down. And I said, you know, the easier money is going to be after we get that reversal going back up to retest that high, right? They run up, right? Run up, right? One, two, blasting higher. How many times? 
times we talk about that pattern in last night's newsletter. The bottom line, though, is we are short covering rally. Nice big V bottom. V bottoms are kind of tricky because you don't want to go trying to buy at the top of that V, and that's exactly where we are right now. That bullish momentum tells me I want to buy some pullbacks. Got my eyes on buying those pullbacks. I've got three different entry patterns I'm watching to buy the dip. But obviously, there is potential now. This thing could keep going here with some strong momentum. I've got two patterns I'm looking for up here for me to qualify continuing to buy. We'll also talk about what will happen if the market gets stuck inside this trading range here tonight. So make sure you stay tuned on the gold here for the analysis on the yellow metal. And of course, over on the euro, boy, again, euro again reacting to those ECB meeting minutes. We jump up. Go into a trading range, very similar we saw last night, trend line coming down. I've got this overhead resistance I'm worried about right now. That bullish market into that range tells me I want to buy that low right inside that battle zone. The problem is, though, we've got a trend line coming down. We've got a very strong bearish momentum here tonight. And so, of course, how do we buy with resistance? How do we buy in the face of the bears? I've got two patterns I'm watching for here to get long to hopefully finish up this big pendulum swing here for tomorrow. So we got everything covered here. We got the euro, we got the gold, NASDAQ, E-mini S&P, and we can't forget about that oil, right? Before we jump in though tonight, I want to make sure you never miss another great newsletter video. Make sure you never miss a video here at School of Trade by joining our mailing list. All I need is your name and your email address. Hit that subscribe now button, and then remember, check your inbox. I'm going to send you a welcome email with a bunch of goodies in there so you and I can get the most out of our time together here on this nightly newsletter. So don't delay. Join the mailing list. Promise never any spam. I know. I hate, sp I, I hate spam probably more than you do, right? So give me your name, your email address, and I'll only send you the good stuff when it's ready every evening. And then before we jump in, I've got a question for you. I need your help. I'm always trying to make improvements on this newsletter. I need your help. In the comment section below, what's your favorite? market. We analyze oil, E-mini, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. I need your help real quickly. I'm trying to figure out which market should go first, which market should go last, right? Do you watch the whole entire video? Do you just pick and choose the market you trade? What's your favorite market, right? What market do you love to trade the most? And do you watch the whole video or do you just chop, right, chop it up and, and pick and choose? Drop me a comment in the comment section below. It would mean the world to me if you take a few minutes out of your day to give me some feedback in the comment section here on YouTube. And while you're down there, please don't forget, if you love this nightly newsletter video every evening, I put a lot of effort into it every evening. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video here each night, right? And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get all the good stuff in your inbox every day, Monday through Friday. And then don't forget, if you have any questions for me, right? Any questions for me at all, you can always pick up that telephone, use that live support tool. I'm always standing by to answer all your questions and help you get started on a professional trading career. Let's jump into our calendar here for tomorrow's trading session. Jumping in here, tomorrow's Friday, April the 5th. This is the first Friday of the month. The first Friday of every one month has the employment number, the employment situation, what we call non-farm Friday. Non-farm Friday is the first Friday of every one month, even if the first day of the month right, is a, is a Friday. We know, of course, whenever we have non-farm payrolls or the employment situation, we know that the overnight session is usually kind of hit or miss. You know, oftentimes the overnight session, the London, uh, the Asian and London session before the employment number comes out, a lot of times that session's pretty quiet. But I will be very honest, the last few months, the last year, we, we, get, this, we get this report once a month, the first Friday of every one month. Uh, the last few months, we have seen quite a bit of action in the overnight session. So I'm not going to say don't trade the overnight, but be very careful in the overnight. If we're not getting very much movement, that means everybody's waiting on the edge of their seat to see what their report looks like tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time. Now, let's talk about the report tomorrow morning. The market opens up, or should I say the report comes out at 8.30 Eastern time. And in my experience, You've got to give it about 10 minutes until you can really confidently see direction, see structure, and ultimately let the market just kind of calm down a little bit. Because you've got to remember, earlier this week, the ADP employment report came out, 
and that gave us kind of a clue, a heads up, as far as what that number is going to look like on Friday. I'm not going to go into the details of the number itself because the number, in all honesty, is irrelevant. Okay, I'll repeat that again. The number for tomorrow is irrelevant. Okay, so all we care about is, is how the market responds to it. Okay, don't worry so much about what the number is. Just worry about when the number is and then how the market responds to it, right? Those are the only things you've got to worry about. But what, I, what, I, what I'm getting at here, though, is, is because on Wednesday we saw a report that will usually be a little bit of a leading indicator of Friday, most of these markets have already priced in, like in quotes, priced in, right, this news. What does that mean for us? It means that most of these markets, if the, if the news comes out tomorrow morning and it comes out as expected, right? And again, don't worry about the number, okay? If the news comes out tomorrow within expectations, the market will usually be relatively quiet, relatively sluggish. Why? Because the market's already priced in the news, right? They already saw what they thought it was going to be, and the markets have a very interesting way of manifesting themselves, pricing in right what they're expecting. But then there's the time when the news tomorrow morning comes out as right outside of expectations. If it comes out outside of expectations, now traders are forced to react. They have to execute plan B or plan C, right? Imagine you work for a big trading firm. The analyst drops off the paperwork on your desk and you execute your orders on Wednesday and Thursday, knowing that the non-farm payroll report is probably going to be similar to the ADP employment report. But now Friday morning comes along and the number comes out way under or way over expectations. You're not going to sit there and say, oh, whoa, right? Oh, who, you know, who cares? You're going to now have plan B and plan C. If it comes out above, comes out below, right? So on and so forth. So traders have backup plans if that number comes out and surprises people tomorrow. Those backup plans, that's when the markets get really, really crazy for a little bit. So the moral of the story is, is that in the overnight session, be careful. If it's slow, don't trade it. Everyone's waiting for employment numbers on Friday morning. If it's moving well overnight, good personality, good tempo, trade it, right? Like we always do. But the bottom line is tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern time, if the number comes out within expectations, it'll be slow and sloppy, right? Because the market's already priced in. If the number comes out above or below expectations, look for volatility. It'll be nutty. No matter what happens, you got to give it a few minutes. If it's slow and sluggish, give it a few minutes, let it, right? let it get some strength and figure out where it wants to go. If it comes out, out you know, outside of the expectations, wait for the dust to settle, wait for the hurricane to pass, find the new direction, find the new structure, and go from there. Now, I'm going to do my best tonight to outline the basic structure, the basic ideas I'm looking for tomorrow. But please be aware, I am very much at the mercy of the employment number tomorrow morning. So promise me, right, as I go over these charts here, okay, this unfortunately is not written in stone. We may see a lot of action off that news report tomorrow, and we may have to kind of shake it off, update our charts, and go from there. Tomorrow is not a day to go moving from simulation to live trading. Tomorrow's not the day to go in increasing your position size. Tomorrow's not the day to be testing out a new entry pattern. Tomorrow is a day all about maintain. Maintain your discipline, maintain your patience. It's non-farm Friday. It's one of the biggest Fridays. Well, we only get 12 of them every year. So pay attention, especially if this is your first one here for tomorrow. So jumping in tonight, I'm going to put the plan together, but I'd be lying to you right now if I said I wasn't looking for breakouts of these ranges or potentially, right, some chop and slop inside the ranges as the market responds to that big round number or that big news tomorrow, tomorrow morning. All right, let's jump right in. Got a lot to cover here tonight. Crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. I'm starting off here on oil. And of course, oil is a range-bound market. Whenever I have a range-bound market, I know I want to buy low, I want to sell high, and I want to stay away from that middle. How do we buy low? How do we sell high? Staying away from the middle sounds easy, but I'll tell you, it's not that easy. There are a couple different ways I like to fade these breakouts. Let's talk about some patterns here right now. Again, I want to stay out of this middle. I want to buy the market as it goes lower. I want to sell the market as it goes higher. Let's talk about how to buy low, how to sell high, and then we'll talk about how to fade those breakouts. 
First of all, let's say we get a move down into the battle zone. As we go into the battle zone, I now know that sellers are likely going to confuse this for a bear market. I wait for those sellers to try to sell off the moving average, and now I know where their stops are. Once I see those sellers trying to sell off the moving average, now I know exactly where I can buy into the stops of those sellers. It's not a trending market. It's a range-bound market which means whenever the market goes down, I want to buy it back up. And the easiest way to do that is to let those sellers try to sell off the moving average and then buy into their failure. Now from there, I don't want to buy as it's going higher because now I'm back in the middle. Like I said earlier, it seems very easy not to trade the middle, but I'm warning you right now, Avoiding the middle is one of the most challenging parts about range-bound markets, and you want to stay away from them because when you get into the middle, like back here, right, it just gets all chopped up. The patterns don't work very well, right? What you want to do is, is you want to go up, let those buyers try to buy, sell into it, go down, let those sellers try to sell, buy into it, up, sell into it, down, buy into it, back and forth we go. So bottom line is, if I can get this move outside the range, get that moving average coming over, let those sellers try to sell that pullback, we know where their stops are now, and I can buy into those stops. That takes care of the failure pattern. The failure pattern is the easy one. The hard part is not chasing after it, right, if you don't have the guts to take the failure. Okay, that's where rookies get in trouble. They don't take the failure, and they chase after it as it goes higher. The problem is nobody wants to buy up there. It's in the middle. So rather than chasing after it, the better pattern from there is to buy the pullback. This is a sneaky one. These pullbacks don't look like they're going to happen. When the market jumps into the middle of that range, it looks like it's never going to come back. But I'll tell you, it almost always does and gives you one more shot to buy the pullback pattern. Okay, those are two easy patterns to look for off the low. Let's talk about, though, what if the market really runs? Because, again, we've got that non-farm payroll tomorrow morning. What if we really take a nosedive down here? Then what do we do? If it really runs off of that news report, now I have to really be worried about just simply buying into that failure. Because a lot of times what happens is when you buy into that failure, what will happen is, is there are actually more sellers waiting right above it. It's true, right? You'll see when you see a big strong move down like that, you'll see the bears try once and you'll see them try twice. So you can probably finish my sentence, right? I'm going to wait for those sellers to try a second time. Aha, then I'll be a buyer right into that stop. So kind of recap, if it's a modest pullback or a modest breakout, it's a failure into a pullback. But if it really tanks, right? You know what I mean, right? News comes out tomorrow morning. If it really tanks, I'm waiting for the one, I'm waiting for the two, and I'm buying up from there. Just a slight different variation, right? We call these nested failure patterns. A very subtle difference, but very important based on what? Based on the market's momentum, based on the market's strength. Okay, so we're staying away from the middle, right? Yes, we are. As we go higher, what do we do? Strong move up, you know, modest move higher here. Let the buyers sort of buy the pullback to the moving average, right? Sell into their failure. And again, don't chase it. Take the pullback pattern right, going lower. Failure pattern, right, into pullback. Good example right here. Failure pattern, right, into pullback. These patterns happen all the time, right? Sometimes you don't get the pullback, right? Like this one, up, back, up, there's your failure, no pullback. Okay, so you're not always gonna get the pullback, right? But again, normally you'll be able to find at least one of them to sink your teeth into. Now we know what we're looking for to buy low and sell high. What's a breakout look like? breakout pattern, breakout pattern. Well, let's see. Every time we see a strong move in one direction, it doesn't seem to be doing very much, right? We've seen a lot of times recently where these buyers and sellers have had really strong breakouts. So how do I know when a market's ready to buy? Well, I look for a very specific pattern. It's called a one, two, three breakout. One is a strong move up. Two is a pull back to the moving average. And three is a jump off the moving average. You'll notice every time the markets tried to go higher, they failed to hold the pullback. If they get the pullback, well, now what we do is, is now we know we have a one, two, three breakout or a one, two, three reversal, whatever you want to call it. Here's a trick now, pay attention. Mark up this high, mark up that high, 
bring it down to that low, and now we want to buy that sweet spot. The sweet spot is the top of that first leg and that hidden channel coming down. Okay, now, where's our target from there? Okay, that's gonna be the tricky part, right? Where's our target gonna be once we get that? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that trading range and I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna copy it up once. I'm gonna copy it up twice. Yep, and there's my target for those breakouts up at that 6320 area, okay? So that gives me a nice, easy spot there now to be looking for those targets. Same thing applies to the downside. One, two, three, you got it. Mark up that low, mark up that channel, and we're selling off of that channel. Okay, so watch out for those breakouts because again, tomorrow is non-farm Friday. And one more thing here, guys. We've talked a lot about the patterns here so far, right? The failure patterns, the nested failures, the pullback patterns, and the one, two, three breakouts. I want to teach you a lot more. I have a lot more I want to share with you guys about all my different favorite entry patterns. But I don't have a lot of time in this video to do that tonight. So to give you guys a deeper dive into the entire trading strategy that we use in our trade room, along with all my favorite entry patterns, I'm going to drop a big, a big link up top there in the right-hand corner. I'll put a big red button at the bottom for our free trading course. You'll see a pop-up there in the upper right-hand corner, right? Grab that link in the upper right-hand corner or hit that big red button below the video tonight on our blog here at Sideways Markets and join our free trial and our free trading course. As part of that free trading course, you'll learn all my favorite patterns, how I use charts for technical analysis, and of course, my three-step strategy. In the meantime though, let's keep moving because I wanna make sure we cover as much as we can here for you guys in the short time we have together. Over on the S&P. S&P is also inside of a range. This trading range, you'll notice, has a bullish market going into it. Now that gives me a bullish bias. That tells me if I have a choice, I'd rather be a buyer than be a seller. It also tells me that I have to be very choosy about which patterns I use to sell right now. Remember, trading ranges tell me to buy low and sell high. Trading ranges tell us to buy low, sell high. Okay, what else though? With that bullish bias, I'd rather be a buyer off of that low than be a seller off of that high. Knowing that momentum is bullish, I also wanna keep an eye on specific sell patterns if I do get a chance to sell off this high. So let's talk about that for a moment. We know from the oil chart that anytime I have a market that's range bound, I wanna see us go below the range let those sellers try to sell off the moving average. Let's, let's zoom a little bit closer on this. Again, the, the hard part is avoiding the middle, right? The hard part of that range is avoiding the middle. Let's just say, for example, let's say we get a pullback down to that low here tomorrow, right? Let that moving average now, right? Let's say we get a pullback down to that low tomorrow, right? Let that moving average come over, get those sellers now to sell off the moving average underneath the low of that range, and then look to buy into their failure. We buy into their failure, we don't wanna chase after, right? So we're buying into their stops, just like this back here, right? One, two, we're buying into their stops and then looking for the pullback, right? Same pattern over and over again. So again, buying into stops, looking for the pullback. Very similar pattern that we just talked about on the oil. And again, I covered these in a lot more detail in that free course I linked up in the upper right-hand corner. Now. It's tomorrow's non-farm Friday. So again, we talked about if it runs, really runs lower, right? Then it's a one, it's a two, and back up. Now, that's the buy side as we're going lower, right? How do we buy in the short term? Why would we want to buy in the short term? Well, you know, think of it this way. You could also look at this as being a bull channel, right? Anytime we see a bull channel, we know two-legged pullback and a retest the high. You could also say, too, we have a pendulum swing. The amount of the move below the range is almost always the amount of the move above the range. And that puts us right around that retest the high. So we definitely have some room to go here to the upside before we start thinking about being a seller. There's a couple things I'm looking for here right now to be a buyer in the short term. Again, I'd like to buy all the way down at these lows, but let's be honest, we may not get that shot here before the news comes out tomorrow. So what are two options to look for? Option number one is the short-term trade long, which because I have what is looking more and more like a spike in channel here right now, right, that kind of spike up 
into that channel. Spiking channels always tell me now to look for that deep pullback, right? That deep pullback into the base of that channel. Now, this is where things are gonna get a little bit messy because you're trying to get into this thing in the middle of that trading range. But as long as we can do this before we get up to that high, we should be okay with this. So I'm looking for that pull back right now, a trap low and a move up from there. You know, imagine now we go up, we go back, we go up, we go back, we go up, perfect. These are the levels I'm looking for for a short term trap low, a nice strong signal, right, and a rally back higher. Again, gonna be a little bit more aggressive on this, but again, right, I think it's worth it in this situation because that strong move up. Anytime we see a strong move up, we know we're probably gonna get a second leg. Now again, the key is going to be getting that pattern before we go back and retest these highs up here. Okay, now, what if we don't get that pattern? What if we just run higher here? Okay, there's two scenarios I'm watching for. One scenario is going to be we break through. The other will be we stall out and back into the range. Okay, here are two scenarios. One is the buy side. Let's say, for example, we break out here, right? Big news report, right? We break out. What's a good way to buy it? We saw the exact same pattern back here. Price jumps up, one try, two try, trap, and go. That's the pattern you're watching for as we go higher, right? Strong move up. What's going to happen as we go higher? Sellers are going to start entering the market. They'll try once, they'll try twice, and looking to be a buyer. Now, what I like to do when we talk about breakouts above new highs is I like to get little trap setups, little trap patterns. In other words, one try for the bears, two try for the bears, trap low and go. Starts off with a strong move up. Again, we're talking strong move here, right? Strong breakout right through those highs. Bears try once, bears try twice, trap low and go. Let those bears try to sell it a couple times, get that trap and we're good to go. Okay, these happen quite a bit when you see breakouts or, or sharp reversals right? Sharp reversals. That's an easy one. Now, what if we don't get that strong breakthrough? What if we sit around these highs? What can I do with this? I'm going to look for what we call a nested two try. We saw a great example back here. Price goes up, it pulls back once, it pulls back twice, and goes. You have to remember, as the market goes higher, what's going to happen? Buyers are trying to buy pullbacks, okay? Market's very bullish at that point, but we're at a major level of resistance. Not a good place to be buying. So we have to be waiting patiently here to sell into it. Buyers will probably try once. If that doesn't work, they'll try it again. And if that doesn't work, they'll bail on it. And that's when I want to be a seller on it. You know, think about it, right? The buyers will come back. They'll buy the 38 2 They'll buy the 50 And if those two tries don't work, right, they'll give up. We'll look for that strong signal and we'll sell it back into the range. It's called a nested two try failure. So really, really great setup potential here for us to buy low with that one, two failure into pullback. As we go higher, strong move up, one, two, and go. Or we might go up, we might struggle here a little bit and dump it back down into that trading range. Remember, stay away from that middle though, right? With the exception of this little spike in channel, right? A little trap low here, right? That'd be the short term potential for that next rally higher. And again, watch those breakouts, right? If we get a one, two, three breakout now, mark up that high, mark up that low, right? And we're buying pullbacks off of that low. One, two, three breakdown, right? Same basic pattern. Buy low, sell high, avoid those middles. Let's keep going. How about some NASDAQ right now? NASDAQ, like I said in, in the uh, introduction, NASDAQ's a pretty crazy one right now. Definitely a wild, wild animal. The most important thing about this NASDAQ right now is it's a very narrow, narrow range. Now, why is that important? Well, narrow ranges have very little open space to trade inside of them. You know, think of it this way. If I have a wide trading range, I can be relatively aggressive buying the low, right, with that failure pattern because there's plenty of profit to make going in the opposite direction. But if I have the opposite of that, right? If I have a narrow range now, there's just no space to trade, right? If I get a pattern in here, I mean, I'm literally, there's no profit potential there. 
Okay, now why is it important? Because there are people behind these candlesticks and there are really experienced people, right, sitting at their desks and they've seen these situations millions of times before. And they know that when you see a really narrow range like this, the best thing you can do is, is get a real big breakout. Why? Just to give you enough darn space to make some money off of it. So when you see you're in a narrow range, stay the heck out of that range because it'll chop you up and spit you out. What you want to do is, is you want to get outside of that range. Now, my tactic when it comes to those narrow ranges is to take the range and multiply it by two, if not three levels. The size of the range, right, creates support. Size of the range creates support. So what you'll see me do is, when I have a trading range that's narrow, I'll put, again, range expansions, I'll stack them right up because I know when I have those narrow ranges, I know I add range expansion there, range expansion there, there, and there, and you can see, right? People are looking to get out of that range, get out of that range, and they're using those double deviations, those double range expansions, okay? That's just some food for thought, right? Narrow range, stay out of the middle, really, just stay the heck out of the whole entire range, right? You really can't even buy the low of the range. You've got to buy below the low of that trading range. And that's probably why the NASDAQ was so wacky, right? Because people were looking at going, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trade that pattern, right? No, I'm not, I want that one. I want this one, right? I want that one. Okay. So now you know the basic idea of that. Next up, now that we know the range is here, right? And we know what happens is sellers will sell high, buyers will buy low. And then what's that word I like to use? Pendulum swing, right? Pendulum swing. You'll usually see if the market is a big move above the range, it'll usually give you a pretty good move below the range. You know, imagine kind of a pendulum, right? Swinging back and forth. You get a balance right in the middle. The market swings up, it swings all the way back down in the opposite direction. So that's why you got that big move lower. Now, that big move lower, now that that move has one, two, three reversaled, and we know momentum is now bullish now, we now know there is a potential for a big, big target up here. So what I can do is I can measure the size of this range. I took it off here just because I didn't want to be too confusing to you guys. We can measure the size of that range now, or size of the move below the range to say, project that back higher, and now I think it's pretty easy to see. We've got a really big target zone now, especially with this news coming tomorrow morning, right? There's a big target zone up top there now around that 76.10 to 76.16 area, right? That's the pendulum swing, right? And that, of course, is the retest of that high. I'll bet everybody is trying to hit that target, right, for tomorrow. Get some major news tomorrow morning, so, you know, we'll see how the market responds to that news. But again, that's where we think the buyers are trying to go. So I want to be a buyer on this, right? I know where my target is. I also know I don't want to trade this range though. I, al I can also see as I draw this trend line down, ooh, this is not going to be easy. I've got this resistance trend line coming down overhead and I've got this darn range just staring me right in the face. So I don't want to buy here. My best options right now are going to be either getting a pullback or a breakthrough. These are the two main options that I'm watching for. And from what we've talked about so far with the different types of entry patterns, I'll bet you can figure out, right, which patterns are going to work best. So we know we don't want to trade the middle. We know we're going to buy low and sell high. We know we have bullish momentum now running back higher. What are some options? Well, option number one is going to be that deep pullback and that buy. Now, I'm going to talk more about this on the euro in a moment, but the big concern here, of course, is that trend line. You know, for example, if I see a shallow pullback here, this is not going to be an easy failure pattern to buy, is it? No, it's definitely not, right? With that trend line there, that's not going to be an easy failure pattern to sink my teeth into. I'm not going to be too confident. So usually when we see a trend line like this, a lot of times what will happen is, is the market will really run, right? It'll really run as it goes, which is great. Keep your eyes out now for a two-legged move going lower. Draw the trend line down and look to grab it on the other side. That's a two-legged pullback pattern. The name's pretty simple. It comes from the one, two legs as part of that pullback. 
use that trend line now. And again, I call it a two-legged pullback or a 2LP. Remember, you'll learn all about these entry patterns in that free course I mentioned at the beginning of the video tonight. That's one pattern, right? Another pattern would be, I'm marking up these swings down here, right? Got my eyes on this range expansion, this 75.43 area. We see a decent move lower, right? We see a pullback to the moving average, and now we have enough space now to be buying before we get up to that trend line. Okay, again, the key is going to be, and this is an easy way to think about it, make sure the amount of your risk is not going to exceed the distance to your trend line. Okay, makes sense? So a good way of thinking about it is if I know I've got resistance here and I get a pattern that pulls back, gives me that two try failure, as long as the risk I have to take on that trade is not greater than the reward I can be expected to get, I should be able to be confident right in that failure setup. But again, if I have to take more risk than the available reward, what's gonna happen? Yeah, professional traders are not going to want to trade that. They'll wait for the market to get lower. Okay, so just be careful about where you're applying those patterns. Now, as we go higher here, what's the trick about buying high? We talked about this before, right? We know we're looking for that rally higher here. We know we're trying to finish off that pendulum swing. But as it goes higher, though, what's going to happen? Sellers. We're now above the top of that range, right? Sellers. So what's a good pattern I can look for up here? to be a buyer. Now watch closely here because I'm gonna go over two different patterns, one for the buy and one for the sell. As we go higher here, I wanna see sellers try once, higher high, try twice, and buy. Now watch how I draw this pattern. Ideally, it would use this trend line, right? Ideally, it would use that trend line. The trend line's not required, but that would be ideal, right? Watch closely on this one though, higher high. Let those sellers try once, let them try twice, trap low. Why do I want to trap low? I want to trap because I want to buy as low as possible. And as we learned earlier on this week in the newsletter, the best way to protect yourself against losses is to buy as low as possible. What's the best pattern to buy as low as possible? Trap patterns. We'll talk more details on that inside the free trading course. Now, that's one scenario, right, to be a buyer. Okay, now, what if we want to be a seller? We go up, you'll see the very difference here now. Buyers will try once, lower low. Buyers try twice, and then we sell into their failure. Okay, think about it. Big strong move up, buyers buy the pullback to the 38.2, right? They fail there, what do they do? They wait to buy it again to the 50 or so, right? All the buyers now are roped in. What happens is when the market's bullish like this, it'll pull back once and then buyers are waiting right below that low to buy it because they know the rookies will get in earlier and they'll wait for the rookies to fail and they'll buy into when those rookies fail, right? That two-legged pullback that we know works so well. So what I do is I just simply wait for those, the rookies to buy. I wait for professionals to buy because, you know, professionals, they're more patient and then we drop it in from there, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes these rookies will hold it and go, right? Sometimes the market will pull back and run. What happens then? We see a one, two, three, you got it, breakout, perfect. Mark up the highs, mark up those lows, right? And we're buying that sweet spot. So once again, it's up for the buy, right? For the buy, it's one, it's two, it's trap and go. Again, notice higher high, right? Why higher high? Because sellers want to sell high. Or maybe you want to be a seller. We go up, buyers try once, buyers try twice. Why is it a lower low? It's a lower low because buyers want to buy low. You're exactly right. Those little tricks, right? Those little ways of looking at this will help make this simpler. And again, don't forget, right? I'm just going over the basic ideas for tomorrow. I cover all of these details in the free course, our membership course, and we do it every day in our trade room. Stay out of that middle. Wait patiently for the breakouts. Buy low, sell high, and again, be careful tomorrow around that news report, right? Make sure you give it a couple minutes after that news report comes out before you go trying to tame that crazy animal. How about some gold right now? Well, we talked about this last night. 
right? As I mentioned in, in the uh, introduction this, mo- this, uh, this evening, we knew we had the ECB meeting minutes coming out and we knew that was going to probably wreak havoc on gold and euro. Oh, and it definitely did, right? Gold took a nosedive shortly after the report came out this morning and, of course, went all the way down to that prior month low and then completely V-bottomed right off that low. You can see that little failure pattern I was talking about, right? We go up, the bears try once, the bears try twice. You're not worried about buying into resistance at that point, so you're not having to worry about a trap, right? You don't need that trap at that point because you're not worried about buying into resistance, right? So as we go higher, it's just bears try once, bears try twice, and bingo. That's the same fundamentals of what I was just talking about for that break higher on the NASDAQ. So you can see these patterns happen all over the place, right? I'm not just, I'm not just making them up, right? They happen all over the place. So bottom line is the bulls clearly have, you know, they, they, they clearly have control. Most important thing right now, there are two big components here. One is the strong momentum. Anytime we see a strong momentum, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know the odds are pretty darn good. We're going to see a two-legged pullback and a retest of the high. Okay, what I want to do is I want to find a level of support that I can buy that pullback. Okay, cue the, cue the levels. I've got my hidden channel, draw off the highs, off of that low, that's a level. Now, honestly, that level may not be very useful because we may get a deeper pullback than that down to that key reversal line. One line, two line, those two levels, those two highs right there. Okay, I call those reversal lines. Those reversal lines obviously create great levels of support. So that's what I mean by we may not even need that channel. My sweet spot's right here between that 93.8 and 92.8. Okay, now that's the idea behind being a buyer. What would be the pattern here on this? The pattern is very similar now we've talked about already. First of all, one, one scenario, a two-legged pullback. Draw that trend line down. Get up and over by the trend line. Now, this could also morph into strong move down, moving average comes over, sellers try to sell off the moving average, they fail, we're buying into their failure, we're not chasing after it, right? We know better than that, and we buy the pullback, right? We are disciplined to take the right trade at the right time. As we talked about last night on the newsletter, right? Discipline, patience, they're like muscles, right? You got you to use them or lose them. Okay, practicing discipline throughout the day so you're ready to be disciplined not to chase after these moves right, that are going higher without you. So that's the pullback, right? Three patterns. One is a two-legged pullback, right? One is that two-legged pullback. And I'm sure right now you're thinking, well, wait a second. Could I use the two-legged pullback in combination with a failure? Yes. Two-legged pullback, failure into pullback up, right? Two-legged pullback, failure into pullback. You, could, you, you can definitely combine them. If you get it, combine it. Okay, if you don't, pick whatever you get, right? Take whatever you get. So that's the pullback here. Now, what if we have this big, strong move up? What if it starts going sideways up here? Because you know, a lot of times when the market moves this much in one session, that's, that's, that's a pretty big move, right? Strong move down, strong move back up. A lot of times these V bottom type of kind of Superman type moves, they end up going sideways the following day. Now, what do we do with a range like this? We double it up, right? Take the size of that range, one and two, right? Create support levels down here. Honestly, they'll probably be right about the same place. But to, you know, but to uh, you know, kind of finish my thought on this, if we do get that range up here, don't buy into it, right? Wait for what? Wait for the pullback. Wait for those sellers to try twice. Once we've got them trying once and twice, then we can buy right into those stop losses, right? Now we know where their stops are and we're buying right back up into that range. Now, what if we keep going higher here though? Then what do we do? Well, this is where things get a little bit more challenging because let's take a trip down memory lane, right? It looks like this is, (laughs) it keeps going, it keeps going. I'm like, is that it, is that it? Nope, this is one big range. Right, the never ending, the never ending range. Now I know, I know, it doesn't seem like a range right now. But remember, this whole move lower was based on news, and judging on the reaction, it doesn't look like the market really wants to be down at that prior month low right now, does it? Right? It, it might tomorrow. Tomorrow again is non farm Friday, so like I mentioned earlier, right, anything can happen. But we have to make sure we remember though that this area up top here, this is the top of that range. That's where what sellers are waiting. 
right? Not only sellers, sellers, but buyers who are sellers, right? Sellers who are waiting to sell, right, off that, off that top of the range and buyers who are taking profit. So if we get the pullback, wonderful. If we go sideways, okay. But if we keep breaking higher here, what are two patterns I want to look for? Well, first of all, right, what could our target be on this? Where do you think the easy target is going to be on this range? I would assume it's back up to retest that 1304.6. But, I mean, I don't think I have to draw it out for you, though. There's potential. This could really run, right, one hell of a move tomorrow. Now, I doubt we're going to see the move all the way up to that 1310 tomorrow. But, hey, it's tomorrow's non-farm Friday. I wouldn't – let's put it this way. If it happens – I, I won't lose any sleep over it. I, I, I won't wonder why, right? We, know, we, we already know why, right? It's gold. It's non-farm Friday. If the number comes out tomorrow in a dismal, right, dismal, dismal number tomorrow, if it comes out really bad tomorrow morning and then we hear some political chit-chat out of China, who knows? This gold could really take off. Again, I'm, I'm speculating right now. We'll know more tomorrow as we see that news report come out. So we know where we're trying to go here, but we've got to get through the top of this range. So what are two patterns to wait for? One pattern would be, if I zoom in a little bit closer here for you, right? One pattern would be strong move up, one, two, and buy. Let those bears try once, let them try twice, and we're buying. Now, we are worried about buying into resistance here. So I do want to have some sort of trap scenario to trade with. It, it'll look just like this. Right? It'll go up, it'll go one, it'll go two, but again, it will trap, right? Because there's resistance overhead. There was no resistance on that first example, which is why traders didn't worry about it. They just bought the pullback. Okay, once they saw those bears trying once and trying twice, they just bought right into the failure, right? They knew stops were up here and they bought right into it. Okay, and because of a short covering rally, it made it easy to choose to pull the trigger. So if we go higher here, I know I've got sellers here. One, I've got two. Remember, the key is strong right? Strong. Real strong move up. Real strong move up. One, two, trap and go. Okay? Real strong though. Again, real strong move up here. I don't want to do this right here, right? That's not what I'm looking for. I want to go through that top. One, two, trap and go. What else? Much easier pattern, right? One, two, three, breakout. Much easier pattern. Mark up the highs. Mark up that channel. You got it. And we're buying the pullback. Okay, that one's a lot easier because it won't happen as fast. You've got to make a pretty good split-second decision when it goes one, two, trap, right? Sometimes those happen pretty quickly, and you've got to be on the ball with those. Or one, two, three, mark up the channel. You got it. Buy those lows, right? That's our plan as the market goes lower now, or, or as, as it goes higher. Okay, now how do we sell this market? What does it look like to be a seller? We go up, buyers try once, buyers try twice, and we sell it back down in. Why can't I just failure, right? Why can't I just sell the failure? Because it's too bullish, right? At that point, this will be way too bullish. Buyers be buying the 382, they're buying the half, then I can sell into those stops. All right, guys? Make sure you're not going too aggressive when the market's that bullish, okay? Or, right, or how else could I sell this, right? We, we, we turn bearish. One, two, three, fine by me. Now, the problem with this is, is now we've got that prior month low here. So what do you think is going to be the best pattern here for you to avoid, right, selling low? Mm-hmm, trap. Find that channel, get that trap in there, right, get that trap in there, and traps, right? Traps will be the most important, uh, most important entry on that because you don't want to sell into that low. Okay, so if it does reverse going lower, it's pretty easy to see that monthly low is going to cause some trouble down there. So look for those traps, right? And again, remember, I'm drawing this thing up here on this nightly newsletter, but we do this together every morning in our trade room because, you know, the strategy is very easy. You know, my three-step strategy, which you'll learn about in our free trading course, which I've mentioned a couple times, linked up in the upper right-hand corner. There's a big red button down there below the video tonight. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the strategy itself is very, very easy. What is not easy is the market sometimes, right? Sometimes the markets can be really challenging, and that's why having a trade room is really nice to have, right? Having somebody there in your core corner to do this with. Okay, wrapping things up here right now. I know you guys are busy people, so I appreciate you being here right now. Uh, over on the euro. 
So not a lot happened today on the euro. You probably noticed it was relatively low volume today, right, on that on that euro. In fact, it was literally 115, 120,000 contracts. So very low volume. It was a range, right, with a bull market. Let's go back in time here. It was a range with a bull market. Now remind me here, right, what do we do with a trading range in a bull market? We buy, right, we buy below the range. One try, two try, back up in. But what happened? What happened? We saw a we saw a real strong rundown. That came off of what? It came off of the ECB meeting minutes, right? So a strong move down. Now, what's the best way to be a buyer when the momentum shifts bearish? We let them try once. We let them try twice. You got it. And we buy into their failure. Guys, this is the same basic idea as the gold traders used earlier this morning, right? Gold goes up, it's bearish, right? One, two, and they're buying back in. Okay, it's a little bit different, obviously. It's a much more dramatic move, but it's the same basic idea, right? The market was so bearish going lower when it popped up, the buyers kind of waited to see the sellers take the bait. Once the sellers wrapped that rope around their neck, then they were waiting there to buy right into that failure as it went higher. The same thing is likely gonna happen here right now on this euro. Right, with the euro now running lower, right? This, the buyers are waiting down here because this is that buy zone, right? We took our, took our range, made our levels down here from last night. So we know we have our buy zone down here, but the strength of that move is definitely what's causing these bears to get a little more confidence, right? They're trying to sell it once, and you'll notice, judging on the condition of that candlestick right now, it looks like they're trying a second time right now. And I would imagine they're doing that because of that big bearish momentum. So we know we're looking for that sell so we can then buy into their failure. Oh, but wait, there's one more problem. Trend line. Now, what's that trend line? Resistance. Now, I don't want to buy into resistance, right? I want to buy at support. Remind me again, guys, what's the best pattern to make sure you buy as low as possible? Traps. You got it. I'm glad you're listening. Potential now for a beautiful trap low up and in. Okay, that's pretty much going to be the only option you have right now. In case you don't want to buy as it going higher, get that trend line coming down. So now we have the ability to really flex our muscles here with a one, a two, a trap low, and buy right up. Again, making sure that we're not buying into that level of resistance. But what if we don't get it? You know, what if, what if we don't get it? What if it pulls back and goes higher without us? Then what can we do? We can use that, we can use that trend line now for a two-legged pullback entry right? Buying off that pullback before we get back up into that trading range. So if we don't get the trap we need, just be patient, wait for the market, get back above that trend line, and then we'll look for the entry from there. So that's going to be the easy way to be a buyer. Now, being a seller at the high, if we do end up back up into this, excuse me, hiccups, if we go back to the top of this range now, that momentum is going to be really, really tough, right? Really strong. So what are some options here? One, Two, buying, right? Trap low, be a buyer there. Same basic patterns, right? That two try failure above the high, okay? Or we go up, buyers try once, buyers try twice, you got it. And we sell it right back down into that trading range. All I'm doing is, is using the same basic patterns in different ways depending on the structure of the market and the short-term momentum right? The structure is the range. The range tells me buy low, sell high. The momentum of the pullback is what tells me which individual pattern will work best in that environment. As you can see, guys, you know, being a successful trader is more than just learning a couple patterns and learning how to use some indicators. It's really learning how to actually understand how to trade these charts, right? How to look at a chart understand there are human beings behind this, right? When a market tumbles off this high, the sellers aren't going to give up after one try. They're going to probably try a second time. And I know when they do that, you're going to have sellers trying to sell twice. You'll have breakout sellers. And I know that in most situations, when it's below over range, those sellers now are in a really deep doo-doo, right? They're not, they're not going to be easy here. It'll want to go right back up into that range. I also know I'm going to watch my back, right, with that trend line coming down. Not to worry though, I provide all of my clients with a checklist. We go over that checklist and that checklist, right, will go down all the different rules we follow, 
to make sure you check momentum, check the trend lines, check the entry pattern, check your risk reward ratio. So I go over all the different right rules before we do anything in our trade room. All right, guys, so don't forget, I'm going over a lot right now, but I've got a great sequence, a great, a, a great uh, video course, right? A great trade room, and of course, a great three-step strategy with all the cheat sheets and the checklists to make sure you can do it right there with me. All right, guys, so we're trying to buy off this low, trying to sell off this high, and of course, don't forget, tomorrow, non-farm Friday, right? Non-farm Friday, non-farm Friday is always a bit of a tricky one. Be careful overnight tonight, right? Play it by ear overnight. Tomorrow, remember, 10 minutes tomorrow morning after that news comes out. If it comes out outside of the expectations, it'll go crazy. If it comes out within expectations, it'll be a bit sleepy. By about 8.40, 8.45, we should have a great plan put back together, right? But be safe tomorrow morning with that non-farm Friday. And if I don't see you guys tomorrow in the trade room, I will plan on seeing you guys next Monday evening. We don't do our newsletter on Friday evenings. So enjoy the weekend. Enjoy your final four. I am extremely excited about the basketball games this weekend. I'm quite a fan of the NCAA tournament. Right? Who's your team? Who are you rooting for? Drop me a comment in the comment section. And again, like I said earlier, what's your favorite market? Which of these five markets do you like the most? Do you watch the whole entire video? Or do you just slice and dice it to what you want? I love to hear your feedback. And of course, right, make sure you subscribe to that channel while you're down there. Guys and gals, great job this week. It hasn't always been easy, but as long as you have a plan and the right coach to guide you along the way, right, anybody can do this the right way. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, right? Be careful tomorrow, non-farm Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.